The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. You know, my dad used to say not every day is a good day, but there's something good to be found in every day. And right here on Skid Row, we are finding the good. As you can see, we've got hundreds and hundreds of cars, people lined up waiting, and we have people in the heart of Skid Row that are also waiting. Like I said, we are finding the good today, and it's because of your help, your support, that we get to have days like this, where we get to help those that are in need. Something that really hit me so hard when I was here last, there was a woman who came in, asked her what she needed. She just wanted simply a bottle of water to wash her hands. And that just touched my heart because it's things that we take for granted every day that literally they go without for days on end. So that's just another reason why it's just so important to connect with us on social media, get the word out. Let's get as many people as we can to help support the Fred Jordan mission so we can keep meeting the needs of those people who come through the doors of the mission. And then days like this, that is kind of a, a special celebration. What we've done is we've gone outside of the mission, out to the surrounding areas here in LA, and we've invited families to come. They're going to get a box of food. They're going to get all kinds of things, but I won't jump ahead. I see Joe Jordan down there and we're going to ask him exactly what's going on. But again, I just want to encourage you to keep praying for Fred Jordan Mission. The needs are great. As you know, we've all been hit so hard this year and it's just been overwhelming and the streets have gotten worse. They've gotten more crowded and so the need is greater. There's no amount that's too little or too big. <laughs> that we can't do something with to help touch and change the lives that come here to the mission. And the most important thing is we pray with them and we share the love of Jesus with them. Again, we just want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for your prayers and love for Fred Jordan Mission. Remember, we are here every day serving. So God bless you. Let's go check with Joe and see what he's up to and see what we're giving away. Hey Joe, how hey, are you? Good to see you. I was just down on town down there and uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of cars and uh, we are doing things a little bit different here on Skid Row today. We are, you know, we still have masks, yes. social distancing, putting all of the great gifts that God's blessing all of the families with in the back of their cars or their trunks or their trucks. Yes. And um, it's, it's just kind of exciting. a drive through. Drive through, yeah. yeah. And, but we're still serving daily. Absolutely. The people here on, on Skid Row. Yeah, we've never closed. We've been open for, you know, well over a year of the pandemic and we continue to meet the needs, whether it's a drive through for our families and kids, which yeah. we're doing right now right. to bless them, where all of our homeless guests will be serving in just a little while. I know, I can smell it. It's actually yeah. amazing. We have amazing, a special chef here today we cooking do. and it smells so good. And I love the fact that even going an extra step for the children, you know, every child should feel special and I think these baskets of goodies is just bringing that extra little bit of love to them today. Before um, I take off, tell me
me a little bit about what is in the boxes and what the people are receiving. Yeah, so there's these Vesta boxes and they're awesome and they're actually from the government, from the farmers to the table for us and we're so excited about it yeah. because we've been getting these 12 pallets a week at a time, has milk in it and eggs, has all kinds of things like yogurts and, and cottage cheese, vegetables and fruits. So awesome fresh boxes. And then we have canned foods, you know, corn flakes and I pastas see, and rice and beans <laughs> and all of the things that are necessary to feed and care for a family for about five days. Oh, so that's awesome. That and then we're doing these essential baskets too that have mask in them, that have hand sanitizer, and that have just all the other things, shampoo, conditioner, soap, the basic necessities that people need just to help. You know, as we continue to declare, because we're sharing the gospel, we have a radio station now, not on the air for the whole LA, but we have this FM radio station that we plug in through our sound system. It goes through the chapel, through the speakers outside, and it goes straight to their cars. I love it. So we're able to share with them Jesus loves them, how much we love them. So we're able to declare exactly and lead them to Christ as they're driving through. And also then we get to demonstrate God's love with all these great things. The need is great. So keep supporting Fred Jordan Mission. And you know, um, Joe, the one thing you were talking about is the fresh produce. And that was something that when I first started coming down to the mission and going out and inviting people to lunch and talking with them on the street, how important fresh produce was. They would ask, you know, I'd say, hey, we're having barbecue or this Saturday. Or thing. Are you having a salad? And it didn't uh, hit me until I realized, you know what, when you're eating something that's in a package that lasts for a month or in a can or whatever, how important fresh produce is. Yeah. And now we have trucks that are refrigerated trucks. Absolutely. And so that has just been amazing to meet those needs, but we still have to put gas in them and we still have to have the produce and we still need help. No gift is too great, no gift is too small, but the importance of keeping these trucks for the fresh produce up and running. Yeah, you know, fresh produce and of course, um, fruits and vegetables and we have lots of farmers too out in the Coachella Valley that bless us and that we get to bring stuff here to, to uh, downtown LA. And then all of the dairy and it's just so much good stuff. So now we're running four trucks and they're running constantly two or 26 foot reefers. So, you know, it, it does, it takes a lot of fuel yes. and there's insurance and there's drivers and all of that. But you know what, God's blessing us with all the product. And so with, with the support of our donors, our partners and our friends who love the community, who love these people as much as we do, because we're all just brothers and sisters, you know? We're one city that needs to stand with each other and be a community and support each other. So by our partners helping, they're helping to bless them with the word of God, to know Jesus, but they're also helping to feed these kids and families, nourishing food. So anything they can do, you know how I say it, I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing, but if we all get together, we can see God do extraordinary things through us, whether it's a dollar or $30 or whatever you can do, and also we need your prayer and volunteers. Amen. Well, you sound like you're ready to get ready to preach. Ready. So I better let you get on with that. Stay tuned. Here at Fred Jordan Missions every day, we see all, all types of people. I remember as a kid, my father Fred and my mom Willie teaching me a song about Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in God's sight. I still know that song, I taught it to my children, and that's exactly what we see here at Fred Jordan Mission every day. Red and yellow, black and white. Every single person that you could think of, from children all the way to seniors, are here on the streets living in LA. And they come to our doors to be loved on, to be shared with, that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. You know, we hand out water, we hand out drinks, we hand out snacks, we preach the gospel, we have hot meals, we do special events. But if you wanna know who comes through our doors, it's all of us. There's no certain person, there's no certain look. But like I said in that song, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. That's who we see here every day at Fred Jordan Mission. People from all around this country that end up on these streets can come through our door 
and we will serve them as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need. I'm super excited to be here at Fred Jordan Mission. We have some beautiful, beautiful arrangement of food. I was a chef for a number of years in and around LA. And finally, I, I kind of found, I feel like, you know, possibly home for serving uh, to this capacity with the hands and feet that God gave me uh, in regards to food. I love serving with my wife. We definitely are very like-minded in this capacity. We're happy to be here. I yeah. mean, had it on our heart to come here and be involved. And we're going to season this salmon and we're going to fire it up. We've got some salad, we've got some scalloped potatoes. Yeah. Green beans with bacon. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful herb herbaceous lemony salmon that we're going to roast in the oven 500 degrees just really beautiful donated salmon i can't believe i get to be able to work with this especially a high volume the kitchen's beautiful happy to be out here i don't think i could be spending any other saturday any better than this yeah i mean i think that when you have a gift you enjoy feeding or giving i mean it's just such a blessing to be able to come and you know we're, we're so blessed we we just want to be able to use our gifts and... Cooking and hospitality is one of those things that weighs really heavy on my heart. And to be able to do this for such a great community in a place that needs it so much is very rewarding. But at the same time, that's, you know, the, the reward is in giving back to the community. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. If you have gifts and you want to get involved and help others, we would love to see you here. Come, come. Awesome. Fred Jordan Mission is definitely a great place to serve, especially if you feel like you have the gifts to do that. And if not, it's just a great place to be around great folks. Come out and serve to your ability. I'm excited because we are blessing children and families by the hundreds and hundreds of cars as we give them what God blesses us with. You know, there's all kinds of gifts and there's toiletries and hygiene products, all kinds of food boxes and what a blessing it is. And then we're going to serve our homeless guests. So it brings me great happiness, but it also brings me a sense of joy, deep joy that lasts. You see, for many of these families, they'll come through here and, and you can see on their faces, we talk to them, we pray with them. We're social distancing. I have my mask for, for when I'm around people, but I wanted to share with you and with my mask, you can't really hear me. But my point is, as we're doing all of this and still being safe during COVID, the joy in these families is really about happiness, happiness that they didn't have food before they came and now they're happy they're going home with food. But for many of them, they won't go home with joy. They'll just be happy. But happiness, it's really temporary. Happiness doesn't last forever. And I've learned that in my own life. You know, I wanted to share some thoughts from Paul the Apostle as he wrote a letter to the Philippians, the church at Philippi. And it's all about joy. And it talks about how joy is the importance, not happiness. You know, many Christians and many who aren't Christians think that happiness is it. We're pursuing happiness. The pursuit of happiness was a movie that was out. And you know, you think of happiness and some people might think of getting gifts, Christmas morning when the gifts come out, walking hand in hand on the beach with the one you love or being on a date with your wife or your girlfriend, that's happiness. That does bring happiness. But you know, some of us also think about vacations or times that we've had in the past that bring happiness. You know, I know for me, my happy place is being around water. My wife's happy place is being around mountains and streams and wooded places. We all have our different happy places. But you know what? I know for me even, like when the water's gone or the vacation's over, sometimes the happiness I had on vacation and that, that excitement, it diminishes. And what happens when all of the happiness of the presents or the food that the families are getting, when the presents are gone or they're broken or someone steals them or they rust, when the food is gone that they receive or they run out of all the products, you know, 
happiness is kind of temporary. And I wanted to share with you today the importance of why joy is what we really need to have. And not that we shouldn't be happy and not that we shouldn't be happy about the things God blesses us with. We can and should be. But if we always just seek after happiness and being happy all the time, we'll miss that mark every time. Because even for me in ministry, serving the least of these, the poor, the needy, the hopeless, the homeless, and the helpless, it brings me a lot of happiness. But it also brings some sadness watching the enemy try to destroy lives and, and what the streets do to people. Drugs and alcohol, mental illness, it's, it's really sad to see some of that. And so for me, I think of a lot deeper than just being happy. I think of joy, true joy that lasts. You know, if people always pursue a lifetime of just being happy, they'll definitely never find that because it's elusive. You know, some people go after how much money can they make or how many possessions, how many toys can they buy? What's the next car? What's the next house? What's the next vacation trip that we can go on? But happiness, if it's based on and depends on circumstances, we're all in big trouble because circumstances change. And as I said before, you know what? The toys, the trips, and even our health can dissipate or be disappearing out of our lives one day. And so we can't base everything on happiness and what we have. It needs to be deeper than that. And so we need to base everything on joy. And when we have our, our foundation in Jesus and knowing Him, and knowing that the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, then we'll be able to sustain and get through anything. Knowing that Jesus will always be with us no matter what. He'll never leave us and He'll never forsake us. And you know what, I'm not saying don't be happy and I'm not saying don't have happy times, we all do. But again, there's a lot of sorrow and sadness. Even serving Jesus through Fred Jordan Missions, you know, I'm sad a lot of times. And it's not always happy to see the destruction happening in people's lives, the despair, the discouragement. There are so many people hurting and suffering through COVID, and that's why we're here. To bring a little happiness for the day, yes, and it does. But even deeper than that, to bring them hope, to bring them joy. And the joy is knowing Jesus, because that's sure and that's certain, and it lasts forever. Paul shares in the book of Philippians something that is just real powerful. He, he shared with the church about joy and the joy that he found in Jesus and the joy he found in his love for them. You see, the church blessed him, they supported him, they prayed for him, and they encouraged him. And so Paul wrote to them expressing his love and his affection and how Paul had one great joy aside from Jesus, and that was brought from knowing that the church of Philippi loved and supported him, and he exhorted them with that. The idea of rejoicing appears over 16 times that Paul talks about it throughout those four chapters. Paul committed his life to serving Jesus by serving others. He faced great wealth but also great poverty. He was locked up in prison when he wrote this letter to the church about joy and how much joy he had because he knew that no matter what, rich, wealthy, had everything, or in despair, he had nothing. He always knew Jesus would be with him and that Jesus was with him. And that took him through everything, even his worst times in prison. And so Paul's life, no matter what, no matter what the circumstance was, he had joy, a deep contentment. And it even says that in all things that Paul found real joy as he focused on knowing Jesus and obeying Jesus. Happiness can be very temporary, but real joy runs deep and strong. There's a confidence and assurance with it knowing that God loves us, He loves you, and He'll always be there and work in our lives. We can always be sure and certain about that. 
Happiness always depends on things happening in our lives, but true joy only depends on Jesus and knowing Jesus. You know, why I'm sharing this with you today is because if I just went from moment to moment, week to week, year to year, of just being happy or trying to be happy, I would find a lot of really sad moments and down moments and discouraging moments and sad moments in my life, whether it's with my family, whether it was with my wife, whether it's with my children, my friends. In ministry, there's always those lows, there's always those valleys. But the one thing that keeps me just on top of things and not rolled up in a ball, discouraged and in despair, I never get to where I'm depressed, where I just can't function because it's not about happiness for me, although I love happy times, and I'm happy right now. But aside from that, knowing Jesus, knowing that he's forgiven me of my sins, knowing that I'm going to be with him in heaven because of what he did for me on the cross, that joy, the joy of knowing the Lord is my strength. And that's what carries me through all of it. Whether it's hurt or betrayal, God bless you kids, God bless you guys whether it's hurt or betrayal or, or sorrow or sadness or loss, you can always, always find peace, contentment in joy because Jesus is the joy in our strength. We see in Philippians 4, 11 and 12, it says this, for I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any situation. Paul goes on to say, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, he says this, I can do everything through him, through Jesus, that gives me strength. I love that so much. That was one of my brother Tom's favorite verses. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that was what Paul said here in the word. You know, Paul exhorts the church in chapter four with these words. Paul exhorts the church by saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Some may think it's weird that Paul was in prison and telling the church to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. In all things, Paul wanted the church to rejoice because of Jesus. Some might think it's weird that Paul rejoiced and had so much joy as he was in prison, but Paul's attitude shows us and teaches us how important it is and a great life lesson that no matter what the circumstances around us are, that we can have joy that is full by knowing Jesus and knowing that no matter what happens, Jesus will always be with us. I hope and pray that today's word from Paul, that happiness versus joy, that you're, that you're encouraged by knowing that even if you're not happy, even if you're in prison, even if you have loss, even if you have nothing, like so many I see on the street, when they know Jesus, when I know Jesus, when you know Jesus, there's a joy that gives us strength because the joy is knowing Jesus and what he did for us. He will always be with you. He will always be with me. Walking us through this life and no matter what happens, by knowing him one day, we will be with him in heaven for eternity. I just wanna encourage you to follow Jesus, to rededicate your life to Jesus, to continue to know him better. And if you don't know Jesus, today all you have to do, the Bible says, is just receive him. Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior, and you can be saved, forgiven for your sins, and have joy and contentment and peace inside, knowing that you have a relationship with your Father. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Enjoy the happy moments, but when the happiness is gone, let the joy of the Lord take you through it all. God bless you. Today, as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever, we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. 
And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. So we had a great day here. We're still having a great day as we're serving the least of these. Needy families, needy children, and needy homeless guests. And it's all made possible because of friends like you. Like you have to know for 76 years we've been here doing this, serving the least of these in Jesus' name. But without your partnership, without your support, we wouldn't be here. I just want to thank you for all of those who pray for us, that support us, that volunteer. And if you're new today or you haven't been involved yet, come out and volunteer. Come work with us and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Come serve a homeless meal to a homeless person that just blesses them for the day. Come be a part of helping to hand out food bags and baskets to children and families and watch the joy and the happiness on their faces. Whatever you can do, it all makes a difference. And if you can give financially, give financially. We would love for you to partner with us so that we can do more as the needs continue to grow. God bless you. in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.